Hello, everyone. Welcome to the unpredictable. Let's continue to talk about unpredictable things that affect our lives. This week's special guest is Salma Hussein. Salma is the author of The Secret Diary of Mona Hassan. And this book tells a story about a preteen girl who is trying to find her place in the world. And this book was recently shortlisted for the Canadian Children's Book Center Awards. Salma's short stories and poems have been published in many outstanding magazines and anthologies. I am pushing the pause button here, as you will see her bio in the description of this podcast. And it's time to roll out the red carpet for our special guest. Salma, welcome to The Unpredictable. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here, Under. Thank you for welcoming me. Uh, what a pleasure, what an honor. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Salma. I'm very happy to have you. Uh, if you don't mind, Salma, uh, I would like to read three, just three lines of your poem, The Light on the Porch Does Not Flicker. Uh, it might be a bit emotional in the beginning, but yeah, let's do that. I turn the porch light on for you. The road left behind you is always there to return to. This beautiful poem is available in the Terms Review. Please check it out. And Salma, you're an excellent writer and a lawyer and a mother of two. Yes. It's, this is a perfect triangle. And in, in this perfect triangle, do you have a road to return to something you should have not missed or something you had to leave behind? Ooh, something that I had to leave behind. You know, I do feel very lucky and blessed that somehow, Andre, somehow I have created a life for myself where I'm able to have um, all these little bits and pieces that work together. I don't know how it happened, but I will say there were the first, you know, 15, 10 years, 10, 15 years have felt very difficult. I feel like I'm always running, but I would like to run a little less fast, make it a bit of a pleasant jog. Um, so I hope that's what I do. I don't know how it happens. I keep my life very lean and clean. I think you and I talk about this too, getting rid of outside noise, getting rid of people that don't work, circumstances that don't work. There's a lot of bullshit sometimes we let into our lives. So you just try to clean it as much as possible. And somehow you can create the life you want. Perfect. I mean, as you mentioned in the poem, uh, you're not lo looking backwards, right? You're just you're just trying to go forward you're just trying to do something new and different correct that's very is, correct. Is, is, is it the lifestyle in short for you that you know i think you're so um you're so intuitive like you're you you hit the nail on the head with that one under that would sum up my philosophy for life to do something different because i don't know again what it is I think, you know, I've had a few health issues and concerns. Yeah. So some of that has made me very conscious that the time that I have, I really don't want to waste it. And I want to do something really different with it. And I'm very impatient to live differently. I'm like, why do I, why would I want to do the same thing uh, that's been done over and over when I have an opportunity to do something very original and different? Salma, in your book, The Secret Diary of Mona Hassan, you are masterfully showing us a world of a little girl. She is, I guess, 11 or 11 yeah. years old, right? And uh, she immigrates to Canada one right. day. And it, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's an immigra immigrant story. Uh, and you are an immigrant too. My question is, very short and clear are you home am i home absolutely i i honestly wonder i am home it's been a long time for me i arrived as a child i've now spent my teenage years here i built my family here my kids are born here um i just read today 
it was Nagab Mahfuz who said, home is the absence of, I should find it. Okay. I should find it so I can say it. It's oh. on my phone. Okay, let me find the quote. Andre, oh, okay. Can yeah, sure, sure. Let, let's stop here. Please let's find it, find it out and Hang let's on. read it. Actually, I don't know how, if I'm pronouncing his name. Okay. I'm ready to read it if that's okay. Yes, yes, please. So I just read the quote today by um, the writer Nagib Mahfouz, who said, home is not where you are born. Home is where all your attempts to escape cease. And to me, I felt like, yeah, I'm home. I'm not looking to escape. I'm, I'm looking to build here. So I feel very much at home. So my immigration story has very much arrived. I know I wrote a story about a girl who's in the middle of her journey, but I was really writing from a place of having arrived. Perfect, perfect. It is because I ask this question because I, I believe you observed the same thing as well, uh, because the immigration process or being an immigrant makes some people like a mourner mm. with, with some endless complaints. I mean, even if you are not in a real needy state, have you ever felt yourself in the, in that state? I mean, complaining about something that you don't need to complain. Ooh. Um, I you know I don't want to. I don't want to ignore that. Maybe I did that in the beginning. I'm sure I must have. I think we go through that journey. Um, how long did I do it? How long did I feel like an outsider? I don't. I don't remember. Again. I was somebody who was very focused on school and education. So I felt very much a sense of belonging in Canadian society because of that. So maybe I just left that thinking behind quickly. It's like, I'm not going to complain when I see, wow, I can do this course. I can get this scholarship. I can, I can try, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't remember those dark days now. <laughs> okay. But uh I think you feel yourself safe, right? Yes. I do. Because if you are saying, yes, I'm home, that, that means you are safe. You feel safe. I mean, the reason why I'm saying that is that people feel safe totally and only in their homes, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay, Salma, uh, let's go back to your book. Uh, I, I believe authors talk to their specific reader groups with their stories. Yes. Uh, the Secret Diary of Mona Hassan is a teen book. Uh, and of course, I enjoyed the book. <laughs> I mean, personally, I enjoyed that really much. And, uh, and I believe the other adult readers did as well. And, but mainly, why did you choose to talk children instead of adults? You know, that's an excellent question because I have asked myself that question many times, Onder. I have asked myself, should I have tried to make her older? Should she be an adult looking back? So many people did tell me, oh, the themes are very adult. Um, but I think that's a little unfair because kids live these lives. They're living lives with adult concerns and we're telling them, oh, those concerns you should only adults should only read about it that's unfair because that is their life they live with these very adult things that happen um why did I write it as a kid's book I didn't really think about it too much I was like this story needs to come out and she's a young girl she's talking I didn't really think ah it gets marketed as a children's book this happens this happens None of that happened. I just wrote it. And then, <laughs> uh, then uh, you know, then the publication process happened. That was, that was also felt independent of me. Thank you for this great answer, Salma. Yeah, personally, I would prefer to talk to children. Uh, th their mind is not filled with hate or some negative thoughts. You know, adults have their own reserves in their minds. And they might listen to your words or read your work in a biased way. Even sometimes they are not aware of their biases. Let's talk about your new project, Salma. I know you are currently writing a book and you have been granted by Toronto Arts Council for this book. Uh, congrats on that. And here's my question. You said you are still running. So what is your main motivation for nonstop producing? I mean... What is your energy resource? 
Ooh. A great question. Because again, I think, why should I take time away from my children to write about other children or to write to other children? My motivation is there is a child out there that is not my child that wants that needs my this story. And uh, not my story, but needs a story that feels like their story. And uh, my children have very easy lives. They have very comfortable, safe, happy lives. And I'm very happy about that. And ho I hope that continues forever. Um, but I also want to reach the child who maybe is struggling. Maybe like I was at some point. Maybe I wasn't. I don't know. But somebody out there. I'm motivated by somebody's struggle. Oh, okay. C can you please... If it elaborated sure you know i mean i again i want to write stories hmm. about difficult topics um so as i continue to write stories about difficult topics i want to i'm motivated to say those things that are uncomfortable or hard to say and to wow. try to put that out there and i want people to read the stories that are hard to hear or hard to understand and feel some hope from it um, so I'm motivated to do that. Okay. I mean, writing stories that hard to read, hard to understand, I mean, that difficult topics. Let's dive into writing process and writing aims a bit. Mm. Uh, because th the stories that include some political and public issues come, come with a risk. Mm -hmm. uh, they might turn the storyteller into a propagandist. Yeah. So here is my question. What's the way to protect your storyteller character, storyteller side against this risk? Oh, and you know, this is something I'm still experimenting with, Under. I think there's a lot of different techniques that I'm looking at. Humor is a big one. I like to make a book funny. Um, so I, I use a lot of humor in my stories, and that's been a nice way to... Yes, absolutely. S -s Sorry for interrupting seriously. <laughs> I laughed a lot. Okay, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I, I'm seriously impressed. Your sense of humor is great, fabulous. You know, and Andre, we know each other well. We know each other well. <laughs> it's super, super funny. But in fact, <laughs> we can come across pretty funny. And I know yeah. that, you know, like in real life, I'm just kind of a little bit grumpy. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> 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 but in my writing I'm a different person and so I use humor I use I'm using stuff like an unreliable narrator um I want the reader to be thinking what is happening you know like putting all these absurd things together what's real what's not real what so it's just a mix of things I think I'm still exploring which is so nice and it's such a lot of fun uh, how about the second book you are working on it right now well, let's see how the second book goes. Uh, but yeah. right now I have a male character. He's a 15-year-old uh -huh. boy and he is going through a health crisis and he has two older sisters and he feels like uh -huh. he is surrounded by a lot of women and a lot of uh -huh. sisters. And he's trying to understand who am I? What does it mean to be me when I have these very strong sisters, these very strong women in my life? So what kind of boy am I? Wow. What's the main um, message if you want to give your readers? What's the main message of this new book? Um, uh, again, when we talk about propaganda and messages, yeah. um, I'm not sure. I think the message might be that we are always searching and that's okay. We are always in journey and yes. that is normal and that is completely fine. Perfect. Thank you very much, Salma. So, Salma, this, this is my last question. What's your unpredictable thing you never turn a blind eye to? I hope I never turn a blind eye to someone suffering, Ander. Mm -hmm. I don't want to minimize or I don't want to, I don't want to say, oh, that didn't happen. I would like to be somebody who says, ah, I see that you suffered. I see that you struggled and I'm standing with you. I hope I have that kind of strength. Perfect. So do you have any specific event or experience to share with us? I mean, this was such a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. I, went, I went on a backpacking trip immediately after I 
uh, graduated from law school. This was a trip for myself as a treat. I wanted to really go to France and Spain. Um, and I first entered France and I was really excited because I was like, you know, it's that classic cliche trip, girl walking around France, eating croissants, sipping hot chocolate. I found the people so incredibly rude to me. I cannot tell you. They were, <laughs> I think at that time, something was happening in the news. There was a lot of anti-Muslim um, sentiment at that time. There were some riots happening. Anyone who would see my passport immediately would shut down and be extremely rude to me. And I was like, it was such a, such an interesting time because I was like, but you don't understand what kind of Muslim I am. And you're treating me like uh, the type of Muslim. I, I know the type of Muslim you are angry with. It was just, I mean, I did this part of it. <laughs> but Andre, it was so like, it was so sad because I would see normal, ordinary French people completely shut down down as soon as they saw the name on my passport and wow. it was very heartbreaking for me and i i left in three days i was like i cannot stay here anymore um i'm going to take my money and i'm going to go to spain and it was a completely different experience in spain where people were much 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 nicer um i mean it was night and day it was just night and day nobody treated you like a stereotype no one assumed oh this is who you are because this is the name you carry and that was that was really nice. And unfortunately, I did not find that in the Parisian neighborhoods that I was in. Um, again, I was in certain very touristic bubbles, um, but it was consistent for over three day period. And I was like, I can't take this. That's yeah. unbelievable. What, what an unfortunate experience. And so you found this way. If you cannot fix an issue, just mm. leave it. Just leave it. You just leave it. You, you, just yeah. Leave Sometimes you, you know, for me, um, again, everyone has different ways of handling situations. I like the withdraw approach, you know? Yeah. Like sometimes we can't fix things, and the strongest thing you can do is walk away. Yes, to protect yourself, right? Yes, correct. Salma, thank you very much for this lovely conversation. And I'm looking forward to reading your new book. Oh my gosh, Andre, thank you so much for inviting me. I think this was lovely. I am beyond impressed by this, by the questioning style. I'm so grateful and thankful for our friendship. Anyways, that's not the time or place for me to say that right now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, we onwards and upwards. We keep on this journey, Andre. Thank you. So, dear listeners, now it's time to say goodbye. Please don't forget to like and share this podcast. And don't forget to come back next Monday as I'm having a special guest. Stay tuned.